Now, as much as I love some Android launches, they can often feel like an unnecessary top and slapped onto an already very tasty base. Kind of like taking a steaming hot Greg's steak bake and then just hoying on a load of Angel Delight. So here's my pick of the very best stock Android smartphones that have been completely untouched with random launches. And for more and latest and greatest tech, please do pog subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. Now your first choice when it comes to stock Android smartphones should always be Google's own Pixel blowers. And right now you've got a choice of three, the most affordable of which is this here Pixel 7a, which will cost you 449 GBPs. Or you can upgrade to the Pixel 7 or even the mega-sized Pixel 7 Pro if your wallet is getting a bit weighty. Most people should be perfectly happy with the Pixel 7a, which boasts similar specs to the Pixel 7 and some of the best camera tech at this price point, so you can point and shoot and get great looking pics day or night. And the Pixel 7a boasts another benefit, the fact that it is a proper pocket pleaser at just 6.1 inches. You don't get a premium glass finish like with its siblings, but it still looks and feels great. And it is water resistant too, so no worries if it gets super damp. Packed into the Pixel 7a's plastic frame is Google's own Tensor 2 chipset, and that's the same bit of tech that powers the flagship phones. This can handle everything up to and including some hot Genshin action, although the Pixel 7a can get a wee bit toasty at times. That OLED screen is a stunner, now boasting a creamy smooth 90Hz refresh rate, and you've got a stereo speaker setup so your flicks sound as good as they look. And of course, as this is a Google handset, you've got a lovely stock Android finish with guaranteed timely updates for years to come. Plus those brilliant Pixel exclusive features like the call screen and which is worth its bloody weight in gold. For this price, it's one of the best mid-range phones right now, never mind one of the best stock Android handsets. Now, if you've got a bit more cash and you want some more premium tech, well, you might want to chuck a little bit more cash Google's way for a flagship Pixel. Both the Pixel 7 and the Pixel 7 Pro upgrade the primary camera sensor to a 50 meg quad beer effort. This definitely proves more capable in ambient lighting and also you've got a more dependable focus. You've once again got Google's fresh Tensor G2 chipset plus extra memory on the Pro model. And although it's no Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 and the Pixel 7 handsets can occasionally heat up a bit, these phones will cope with anything you chuck at them. And as for the media chops, well these flagships once again serve up some stunning AMOLED screen tech. 90Hz on the Pixel 7 and 120Hz on the Pro, plus you get an upgraded Quad HD Plus resolution. And of course, like the Pixel 7a, you've got that gorgeous stock Android experience with years of updates to come. You've also got wireless charging support, again, like the Pixel 7a, but the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro boast faster wired charging support. And if you upgrade to that Pro model, you've got an almighty 5000 mAh battery. That said, any of these Pixel phones should last you the full day, even with several hours of screen on time. And I have done a full side-by-side -side Pixel 7a versus 7 versus 7 Pro comparison if you want to see what the differences between them all are. Now, if you're not swayed by a Pixel, but you fancy a compact blower just like the Pixel 6a, well, definitely don't sleep on the ASUS Zenfone 9. This 5.9-inch smartphone is one of the most lovable little buggers launched in 2022, and it's the perfect alternative to the also excellent Xiaomi 12 if you want a compact smartphone but with a stock Android experience. Some top-notch hand feel and effortless one-handed action is just the cherry on the cake though, because ASUS has crammed in Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chipset for proper beefcake performance. And they've also smartly improved the cooling system over last year's blower so the Zenfone doesn't get all sweaty and moist under pressure, like when you're smashing these wee troll knobbers into mushy paste. And even more impressively, for such a dinky handset, the battery life is off the scale. You'll easily make it through the most intensive of days on a full charge with this thing, even with lots of camera play, a bit of gaming, media streaming, all that heavy lifting. And the way you do finally manage to kill the Zenfone 9, sadly there isn't any wireless charging support. As for the software, it's as close to stock Android as you could possibly hope for, with just a few extra bits bolted on top, like some nifty gesture support. You've also got a pretty bloody good gaming mode packed in there as well, with all kinds of features similar to ASUS's ROG phones. However, don't dive on in expecting the same level of software support as you would get from Google's Pixel Blows, because unfortunately it's just two guaranteed Android OS updates, and then just over two years of security updates as well. And if you're after a stock Android smartphone, another quite jazzy alternative is Colpay's Nothing Phone 1, which sports the most talked about rear end since Beyonce. Yes, all of the headlines are focused on that flashing disco bollocks known as the Glyph Lighten. It is basically just a glorified notifications light though. 
And you'll find if you dive on beneath the literally very flashy exterior, you'll find a serious competitor to that Google Pixel 6 action. Performance is much better here compared with the Pixel 6 here for gaming, while you once again have a gorgeous OLED display, this time with faster refresh. That camera tech is pretty bloody good too, coming close to the Pixel a lot of the time and rarely chucking up a bad looking pic. And you've even got support for wireless charging, something that's missing from Google's mid-range Pixel. The Nothing launcher does tweak the aesthetics with a too cool for school dot matrix design and the less said about those wallpapers and ringtones, the better. But otherwise, this is stock Android through and through with three years of guaranteed Android OS updates and four years of security support as well. So definitely an improvement on that Zen phone. Gotta say, when I first reviewed the Nothing Phone 1, the battery life was pretty cack and the face recognition worked about as well as a chocolate dildo. But thankfully, updates have sorted out these problems, so now it is one of the better Pixel rivals out there. And if you are tempted by the Nothing Phone, well, don't forget that Colpeer has already confirmed that the Nothing Phone 2 is on its way, should be launching in just a couple of short months. Now, Motorola is another mobile manufacturer who loves to slap a bit of stock Android on all of its smartphones. And if you've got plenty of cash stuffed under your mattress, well, I highly recommend checking out the fresh new Moto Edge 40 Pro. There's no 200 meg camera slapped on here, unlike the previous flagship, but that 50 meg shooter does a proper job in even quite taxing conditions. And you've also got a 50 meg ultra wide and a telephoto snapper for a bit of flexibility. The Motorola Edge 40 Pro also serves up an almighty 6.67 inch 165Hz OLED screen and stereo speakers slapped into a stunning and skinny chassis. And it's not just a looker either, this Moto blower is powered by a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 so it is a proper beefy bugger. There's also space for a 4600mAh battery with 125 watt wired charging support and a bit of wireless charging as well if you want it. Not to mention up to half a terabyte of storage. And last year's Motorola Edge 30 Ultra is still available sporting very similar specs plus that 200 meg snapper. So if you see a good deal on it, it could well be worth a punt. Now if that's all too much tech for your face to handle or you don't have quite enough cash for the Pro or the Ultra, well no worries. You can always nab yourself the regular Motorola Edge 40 for almost 300 quid less than that Pro model. This more affordable option is powered by MediaTek's still pretty beefy Dimensity 8020 and boasts premium bits like a 144Hz POLED screen and a capable 50 meg camera. The battery has only shrunk slightly versus that Pro effort with 68 watt wired charging and 15 watt wireless charging to juice it back up. And all of that is wrapped up in a strokably delightful vegan leather frame. You can also grab the slightly more sedate Moto Edge 30 Fusion, which again boasts a 50 meg main camera that's absolutely fine for everyday photography. Performance is smooth enough with an older Snapdragon 888 Plus chipset running the show. While the 4,400 milliampere hour capacity battery puts in a proper shift, giving you all day play, no worries. You've also got 68 watt wired charging, which fills a backup in a jiffy, although sadly no wireless charging support here on the Fusion. Then there's the Moto Edge 30 Neo, a pleasingly compact 6.28 inch blower, similar to the Zen 9 and Pixel 7a. This comes in special colors handpicked by Motorola's latest partner, Pantone, including this spangly very peri option. Around the other side is a gorgeous 120Hz POLED display, although the Neo serves up more basic performance than its siblings with a Snapdragon 695 running the show. And there's still enough grunt to run the latest games, albeit on lower graphic settings if they're proper memory guzzlers like Genshin Impact. On the flip side, the Neo is considerably cheaper than the other two Moto Edge smartphones I just banged on about just then. And the 4000mAh capacity battery, while a little bit smaller, still offers good returns helped by the more energy efficient platform. And you've got that 68W wired charging and full wireless charging support here as well, unlike the more expensive Fusion. However, the 64 meg primary camera sensor lags behind similarly priced rivals such as the Pixel 7a. So if photography is a priority for you, I'd say go Google. And I also got to say in my experience so far that Motorola isn't quite as dependable as Google and some of its other rivals when it comes to the software updates. So if that's a big thing for you, you might be swayed elsewhere. And if you happen to be partial to a bendy smartphone, and who isn't, well, Motorola can also drain your savings account with the rather snazzy new Motorola Razr 2022. This third generation Razr reboot smooths over all of those bumpy crappy bits from the previous pair, boosting the battery life as well as the power. This thing runs off the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, so you can game away on whatever your lovely little heart fancies. 
The 50 meg camera does a decent job for snaps and day or night, and it can also snap your mug using that big and bright external display as a kind of viewfinder. It's a strong rival to Samsung's Galaxy Z Flip 4, and it's 50 quid cheaper too. Oof. And if you don't happen to have the cash for any of these motor or the smartphones, what I've been telling you about, well, no worries. Maybe try the Moto G82 instead, which costs under 300 quid here in Blighty. The highlight here is that gorgeous OLED screen. It's another 120Hz 10-bit eye pleaser, backed by stereo speakers for a merry old Netflix session. You've got a big old 5000 mAh capacity battery, you've got expandable storage, and performance comes courtesy of Qualcomm's Snapdragon 695. Not the beefiest chipset around, so no one's going to be dribbling into their neck flesh thinking about all of that raw power, but it is good enough for gaming on Call of Duty and PUBG, and even Genshin Impact can run at an alright nip at the lowest graphics settings. The Motorola G82's 50 megapixel primary camera sensor comes with optical image stabilization built in, and it's a pretty decent everyday snapper. That stabilization helps out in dimmer light, and you get sharp, colorful results the rest of the time. If you can look past the limited software support, the Moto G82 is a banger at this price with a lovely stock Android vibe to boot. And for even less cash than the Moto G82, you can snap for yourself the Moto G62. This plastic slab boasts water repellent design so it gets splashed without exploding and you've got all the usual features including NFC, a headphone jack and micro SD support. Plus of course you've got all the Motorola's bonus bits chucked on here like the dedicated gaming mode and the excellent karate double chop to turn on the torch feature which I bloody love. <laughs> the 6.5 inch IPS screen ain't nothing special but it does support 120Hz refresh while the Snapdragon 480 Plus chipset is good enough for your everyday shenanigans and some light gaming while also offering 5G support natch. The 5000mAh battery keeps you going all day too no matter what you're up to. And the camera may struggle in testing conditions, but it does pack in Motorola's AI smarts to help you capture the best pics possible. And last up, if you're after an affordable stock Android smartphone, we'll definitely check out Nokia's latest blowers. One of the best right now is the Nokia X30 5G, an eco-friendly mobile built from a fully recycled aluminium frame and mostly recycled plastics. Packed inside of this tree-hugging body is that Snapdragon 695 chipset, which once again does the job for gaming. While the 6.43 inch OLED display and the stereo speaker setup means good times when streaming a bit of the Disney Pluses or even your uncle's spurt here on YouTube. Manufacturer HMD Global is rather generously guaranteeing three OS updates beyond Android 12, so that means you're covered all the way up to Android 15, so hopefully you won't be hoying this phone in the bin after just a year or two because it's out of date. And they're also chucking in a three year warranty as well, so no worries if it muffs up. The 50 meg camera features built-in optical image stabilization and it's one of the better snappers found on a Nokia smartphone, working well even in quite low light, if again not quite up to those pixel standards. Like some of its other mid-range rivals here, the Nokia X30 is fully water resistant as well and while the 4200mAh capacity battery can't be charged wirelessly unfortunately, it will at least see you through a full day of use, no problems at all. As long as you're not constantly bashing those annoying little gribbly hill troll things in Genshin Impact, of course. The Nokia G60 5G is another respectable everyday smartphone for just 300 quid, with the added bonus that it's mostly constructed from recycled materials, so making one doesn't tit up the planet as much as other phones. And with quite a few years of OS and security updates guaranteed as well, hopefully you won't have to hoi it in the bin and replace it with another one in double quick time. The Nokia G60 is powered by Qualcomm's Snapdragon 695, so once again this phone breezes through most tasks with a spring in its step and doesn't disintegrate if you try playing games either. That 6.58 inch screen is mere IPS tech sadly, but it's not a bad panel, still quite poppy, if not quite as bright as I would have liked. Battery life is as good as most of the phones in this best budget roundup where you get plenty of extra perks like expandable storage and an actual headphone jack. And while the Nokia G60 5G isn't a patch on the Pixel and quite a few others here for photography, it's still fine as long as the lighting isn't being a proper dick. Strong contrast and dim conditions are not this phone's friend. And that right there, my lovelies, is my roundup of the very best stock Android smartphones that you can grab yourself right now in 2023. Now, I might have missed off your own favourites. Definitely clue me in as to what a massive knobber I am down below and let us know what your pick of the best stock Android phones is, is or depending on how many you have. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe, ding that notifications bell, and have yourselves a ruddy great rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.